Come on, son, you're gonna be late for school. Actually, Dad, I'm done going to school. Oh, really? Why? Because of what I learned at church, of course. Mm-hmm. What's the point of going to school when the world could end at any moment? These are the latter days, after all. So, I'll be sipping lemonade in the backyard. Ah. Uh. Back in Acts was the first time we read about Paul's second great mission. He was traveling with Silas and Timothy when they were prompted to visit Thessalonica, a large city on a major highway connecting Rome with Asia. And Paul went straight to the Jewish synagogues and began teaching. After several weeks of great success, many people were converted and became Christians. But unfortunately, this really upset the leaders of the synagogues who forced Paul and his companions out of the city. So now, with the exiled Paul, Silas, and Timothy far away, Paul worries about their recent converts in Thessalonica and sends Timothy back to check on them. And to their great joy and amazement, he finds that despite persecution, the converts are still faithful in Christ and even spreading the gospel themselves. Paul is so grateful for Timothy's report that he writes them a letter, chronologically probably his very first letter ever. And that letter is now the book of Thessalonians. Many of the converts in Thessalonica love Paul's letter so much that they read it again and again. In fact, Paul's letter is so great that you and I are still reading and talking about it today, right now. Wow. Do you think anyone will be reading our emails in 2,000 years? So in the letter, Paul sends encouragement, motivation, and lots of kind words. He says, We continually thank God because... When you received the word of God, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as the true word of God. And then he talks about one of his favorite subjects, Christ's second coming. He actually mentions it several times. Paul describes how Christ will descend from the heavens and the righteous of the earth will be called up to meet him in the clouds, including all good, worthy people from all religions, cultures, races, and countries. Won't that be astounding? Like Jesus taught before, Paul reminds the Thessalonians that Christ's second coming will be as a thief in the night. Uh, huh? Uh, well, a thief coming into your house in the middle of the night is pretty unexpected, right? At least we hope it is where you live. And if we're not watching or are unprepared, he'll come suddenly, without warning, while we're going about our business or sound asleep, totally catching us off guard. So we should get to know God's signs and prepare our hearts and minds to always be ready for Christ when He actually does appear in the heavens. Yes, we can become, as Paul calls it, the children of light who dwell in light and truth by clothing ourselves in faith, love, and the hope of salvation. These are the people who'll be watching and waiting. Now, Paul makes Christ's second coming sound so amazingly spectacular, like it's happening really soon, that many of these new converts in Thessalonica flip out a bit, quit their jobs, and just start sitting around waiting for the second coming to happen. Um, I don't see why we need to work if Christ is about to come and save us. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to plant my farm this year, since we won't be around to harvest it. Where's the TV remote? Uh-oh. Unfortunately, people today still sometimes overreact to this. And whether or not we're alive on Earth when He comes again, now is the gracious time given to us to prepare to meet God. We should be spiritually and physically ready and seek personal revelation before we get too worried. Fortunately, we have a modern prophet who tells us what God needs us to focus on and do as we prepare. Things like gathering Israel, doing temple work, and being peacemakers. Well, Paul learned his lesson about discussing Christ's imminent second coming and almost never mentions it again. In fact, when Paul learns that these converts have stopped working and are just waiting for Christ's appearance, he quickly sends a second letter to the Thessalonians explaining that the second coming won't happen until there's first a falling away. The Greek word he uses is apostasia, meaning an apostasy, revolt, or a defection from truth. And today, 2,000 years later, 
History has shown, and our prophets have confirmed, that this great apostasy did happen. Christ's priesthood and prophetic leadership was lost from the earth, later restored, and we're now living in the time of the restoration. So yes, we're much closer than ever to Christ's second coming. But again, let's not freak out or quit our jobs either. Paul then explains what we should be working on in the meantime, including the need to comfort, support, and be patient towards all people, to pray without ceasing and always give thanks to God, to abstain from all appearance of evil and to not be weary in well-doing. Hey, this list actually sounds like all the things that Jesus did. Isn't it cool that what Paul wrote in his letter 2,000 years ago still applies so well to us today? Yeah. So, let's continue to do our best to be like Christ and follow His perfect example while we continue to prepare and patiently watch for Christ's second coming. Almost 50 years ago, Living Scriptures was founded to help everyone better understand and feel the power of God's Word. Who knew that today's Line Upon Line series would touch half a million lives every week? Season 4, The Glorious New Testament is in production, and you are invited to help us in this great cause by clicking the donation link below. And as our gift to you, anyone donating $10 per month also receives a Living Scriptures streaming subscription. For a donation of $1,000 or more, our artists will give your likeness a cameo in one of our videos. Together, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can make a lasting impact on countless people around the world. From all of us, thank you. And now, go read the scriptures for yourself.